gamot. Many people think about their roots. Di ba mo? Mangita ta sa atong gitawag nga family tree. Mga some of us here, ang ilang family tree sa Japan. Praise God. As itong mga taga-Japan, family tree. Tapos kamot. Praise the Lord. Family tree from Japan. Praise God. Mauna, makaanto sila sa Japan. They have privilege. They can work. And a lot of privilege. Why? Family tree nila sa Japan. Family tree sa Amerika. Tapos kamot. Wapay family tree sa Amerika. But here's the thing, my son. As a believers, we also have root. Our root system that sustains our life is God Himself. Amen? Siya ang nag-sustain ka for almost two years in yung itawag na to COVID-19. Gipanalipdan ka sa ginoo up to this very moment of time, God is faithful to you and I. Because our root system is God Himself. Everything we do is dependent on Him and not on our flesh. Dili sa atong kagalingan. I want you to open your Bible this time in book of John chapter 15. John chapter 15, verse 4 to verse 5. And this is what the Bible declares. Sa Sibuano. Pabilin ka mo kanako o magpabilin usab ako kaninyo. Ingun nga ang sanga. Listen to this phrase. Dili makapamunga kung dili magpabilin sa punuan. Kamu dili sa makapamunga kung mubulag ka mo kanako. Hallelujah. Now listen to verse 5. Ako mao ang punuan sa ubas o kamu ang akong mga sanga. Ang tao nga magpabilin ka na ko og dili diha kaniya maoy mamungag daghan and watch this kay kun wala ko kaninyo wala gyud kamoy mahimo hallelujah apart from me the bible declares you can do nothing and that's the reason why our root system is god himself amen Ayaw og salig sa imong kaugalingon ng soon. Otherwise, your life will be miserable. Now let's go to the last part, verse 19 to verse 24. A great hope along with a great warning. Now in verse 19 to verse 24, Paul continues his warning Ngadto sa mga hintel. Tanaw ang verse 19 to verse 21. He says, You will see then, branches were broken off, that I might be grafted in. Well said. Because of unbelief, they were broken off. Kinsa man ang gisgutan dali. Tungod sa kagahay sa o sa mga Israelita, they were broken off. And you stand by faith. Talks about the Gentiles. Mauna ingon ni Pablo, do not be haughty, or meaning do not be ignorant, but fearful. Why? Because in verse 21 it says, For if God did not spare the natural branches, which is Israel, He may not spare you either, which is the Gentiles. His own, God set the Jews aside because they refused to come to Him by faith. Ang ekonomiya sa Ginoo nga modul ta kaniya diha sa pagtuo. You are being saved by what? Faith. Pagtuo ra. But what happened to the Jews is that they insisted on offering God in their what? Good works. Ang ilang paagi nagsigi sila insist na ang kaluwasan na sa mayong buhat. And that is the argument of Paul towards the Gentiles. Mauto ni Ingon si, si Pablo, how in the world that you keep on insisting in good works, we're in Abraham, in Genesis chapter 15, verse 6, believe in God by faith. Remember the difference from Genesis chapter 15 
to Exodus chapter 20, 600 years. Mauna mo yung si Pablo, si Abraham nagtuo, gihimo siyang magtutuo because of what? Because of his obedience through faith. And how in the world that you keep un- insisting about good works? And somehow, even our time now, dagan paghihapon ang muinsist nga ang kaluwasan bunga sa maayong buhat. No, is not. According to book of Isaiah, chapter 64, verse 6, ang imong maayong buhat susama so sa hugaw nga trapo sa tubangan sa ginoo. Therefore, we Gentiles have been accepted and we're grafted in because we accepted the Messiah by faith. And the moment we get proud, we are no longer exercising our faith. Why? Because faith is a humble dependence upon God. That is faith. It's a humble dependence upon God. And if you're proud, your confidence now is in yourself rather than God. Pasigarbo na ganit ang mga isoon, ang atong pagtuo na ana sa atong kaugalingon. And we need to remind ourselves, if God would cut off the unfaithful Israel because of their unbelief, He would not hesitate to cut off the unfaithful church like you and I due to unbelief. Remember, God does not deal with what we call double standard type of Christianity. Dili na kay mutan sa ginoo nga karon Christian ka ug ma di inasad. Mao my son, once again, the service will always start one meter away from our sanctuary. Service will not start nine o'clock here. The service will start when you are outside. Add to mailhi ang imong pagkaikaw. Not inside, because inside we are all pious. We are hallelujah, praise the Lord. Mupiyong ta, muhilak ta, magwarawara ta. But the question is, what about one meter outside? And that is the real thing. Amen? And remember this, God does not deal in a double standard type of Christianity. Let's go to verse 22. And verse 22 it says, Therefore, Consider goodness and severity of God on those who feel severity towards you. Goodness, if you continue in His goodness, otherwise you, which means Gentiles, also will be cut off. My son, in verse 22, try to take note the word goodness and severity of God. Okay, that's a verse. Goodness and severity of God. Severity means the description of the most extreme form of discipline of a rebellious child. Mauna word nga severity. Now Paul reminded Israel about Leviticus chapter 26. Now we need to understand that the book of Leviticus was written 1,400 years 1,400 years before Paul. Onya kay kini nga tong gibasa kam Pablo naman so from Jesus Christ during the time of Paul up to now is 2,000 years. Now kung atong ipintahon di ay gikan karon hantod sa pagsuwat sa Leviticus is about 3,600 years. The question is is kini nga tong gitunan is still Magamit sa atong panahon? Yes. Yes. Now, Paul reminded in book of Leviticus chapter 26, wherein Moses warned the people that they have two choices to make. First, in God in Moses, if you follow the Lord and keep His commandments, 
His kindness and blessings will be upon you. However, however, if you will reject the Lord and embrace idolatry, then His severity, His wrath, and judgment will be upon you. So, gitaganong duha kapag pili ang mga Israelita. And Paul reminded the Israelites. Now, if you will read Leviticus chapter 26, from verse 1 to verse 11, you will find out that the blessings followed kung sundo ni Musnisya. Now, it says, their land will produce and their land will be productive. Ug sundo ni mo ang gino. That is in Leviticus chapter 26, verse 1 to verse 11. And there, there will be peace in the land. So, sundong ko ni mo ang gino. Doon ay kalinaw. All harmful beasts and pestilence will be removed. Any nation that attempts to harm will flee in fear because God will fight for them. Nindot kayo ng mga privilege. Sumpay pa. God will once again live with them in the midst and walk with them. Sa ikon sa Biblia, di ko ikaw biyan, di ko ikaw pasagdan. And they will never again be enslaved by any nation. Once again, this is a promise of God. Ug sundon ni mo ang akong kabugotan. Now, what if Ingoni sa Gino, ini mo says tanaw ha, ug dili ninyo sundon, mao pud ni mahitabo. Leviticus chapter 26 verse 12 to 46. This is what will happen. Ingoni ha, terror and disease will come upon them. Mga but ang mga kadaot, mga disease, their enemies will again roll over them. Their vines will not produce enough food to eat. Wild animals will overrun and will kill their children. Enemies will surround the land in desperation because of great famine. But this time, I want you to open your Bible. Leviticus chapter 26, verse 29. You will eat the flesh of your son. Can you imagine? Can o ninyo ang inyong mga anak? Muingon ka, Pastor, tinuod ka diha. And that's the reason why giingnan ta mo na basaha ang inyong Biblia. Nga nung ning abot naman diri ka pagingon, Can o ninyo ang inyong mga anak? Why? In desperation because of great famine. Question, nahitabo ba ni pastor? Yes. Yes. In 2 King chapter 6, verse 26 to verse 28, you will find out kay wa sunda sa Israelita ang kabubudon sa ginoo dihay panahon nga nagsabot ang duha kababay. Igon sa usa kababay, karong adlaw ang imong anak mo ay atong kanon. Ang Biblia, and he, she boiled, diluto. And then, pagkasunod ng law, kay nagsabot man sila, ning balik siya, oh, ang imo na pong anak, may luto na to. Wa man niya gipakita. Gitago niya ang iyang anak. Apan ang, ang lesson learned na rin mga isoon. Nga, ang maong kapait sa kinabuhi, muabot ni mo og nako, o dili ta musunod sa kabubuton sa ginoo. In fact, during the time in the New Testament, according to Josephus, si Josephus is own Jewish historian. In the writing of Josephus, according to Josephus, in 70 AD, during the siege of Romans, sa Jerusalem, nahitabo po nga giluto ang ilang mga anak aron lamang makakaon. Because of what? Because of famine. And imagine, imagine sa imong kagalingon. It is hard to imagine nga mga hudiyo gitagaan sa maong pagpili. Asa kahit ilang pili yun, mga ison, sa duha nga pagpili. Ang uno, ang dos. Blessings or judgment or wrath. Asa mangkahan. 
ang ilang gipili ang nasa ikaduha. Nga naman, kay mauman to ilang gihimo. Mauman to ilang gihimo. Gisupak nila ang kabubuton sa gino. Wa nila sunda ang kabubuton sa gino. And that's the reason why if you have time, if you will read book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, the same thing ang giisgutan dito sa Biblia. Blessings of obedience and curse of disobedience. Do not expect something from God if you are living in a double standard type of Christianity. No, it's not. Because God is a holy God. The Bible declares, Be holy for I am holy, for without holiness, no one can see the face of God. No one. And we need to remind ourselves that God is a holy God. Amen? Verse 23, it says, And they, which means Israel, if they do not continue in their unbelief, will be grafted in, for God can graft them in again. What's the word? Grafted in again. God will extend justification to Israel as a nation if they believe in the grace principle of the Messiah. The word again means God will restore the nation Israel. Mauna pag-ingon dito sa praise, for God can grab them in again. How? Ano sa man siya may son? God can grip them in again. Anus ama ni Maytabo nga igrafted in again ang mga Hudyo or ang mga Israelita. It will happen at the end of Great Tribulation Period. Nga itong gisgutan kanina. That after the Tribulation Period, the second coming will happen and then the war of Armageddon and then of course, Jesus Christ will reign, will win and then Israel will believe that indeed Yeshua or Jesus is the Messiah. And during this time, a great numbers of Jews will finally believe in Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord, I was privileged nga nakahadto ko sa Israel, mga iso. And I praise God for that. And indeed, it's only a remnant in Israel believe in Jesus. Pipila lama. But after this time, during this time, after the tribulation period, during the second coming, that's the time that they will accept Jesus and we will reign together with them in the millennial reign of Christ, which is a thousand years. And that is the original blueprint ang makauba nato ang kino. Amen? Together with those who are faithful in the Lord. Now let's go to the last one, verse 24. For if you were cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, meaning we are wild by nature, Gentiles, you and I, and were grafted contrary to the nature in the cultivated olive tree, how much more will this, who are natural branches, grafted into their olive tree? Mga Igson, if God cut out the cultivated Jewish branches because of their unbelief and because of His kindness, He grafted in the wild Gentiles which you and I. And if the Gentiles becomes arrogant, that's the reason why God is reminding us, if the Gentiles becomes arrogant, God can break them off also according to verse 19 and verse 22. So, og diputol sa ginoo ang iyang katawhan tungod sa ilang wa pagdawat kang Kristo as the Messiah. More so, ni mo og nako o kita mismo mahimo ng arrogante sa atong pagka. 
Amen? In conclusion, when Israel rejected Jesus Christ, the nation lost its favored position before God. And the gospel was then preached to us Gentiles. And God allowed this so that the Jews were hopefully become jealous and turn back to God. Nga nung mag-jealous man sila, ilang makitaan sa mga hintel, makitaan nila nga ang tinuoray nga gugma, nakitaan nila na to. Ang tinuoray nga kausaban sa kinabuhi, nakita nila na to. Makaingon sila, how in the world they have that thing? They have, they have that love and we don't have it. That is what we need. So mahimo silang jealous di ang dapita. And then they will come back to God. Mubalik sila sa gino. Tungod sa ilang nakita, ngadto sa imong kinabuhi o sa akong kinabuhi. Here's a question. Before I will end. Can you think of anyone who has become jealous because you're Christian? Kauna na ka nga, dun ay usalang katao nga nakadesire siya nga may kanahangkay ko anong iyang kinabuhi. Naka, nakabaton siya envious feeling. Nga ganahan siya nga ang imong kinabuhi unta, may mong iyang kinabuhi. Friends, if we are just professing Christian and nothing changes in our life, the unbeliever will look at us and say, if that's what Christianity can do for you, just keep it. I don't need it. And I don't want it. That will happen. But thank God for those believers whose lives attract the lost soul to the Savior. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord and happy Lord's Day to all. Let's prepare for a communion Sunday. So today is Communion Sunday. So, nadiri ang atong offering in the front. So let us stand up as we so sing song.
In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, Paul says, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a bread. And when he had given thanks and broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Whoever therefore, listen to this, eats the bread and drink the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and the blood of the Lord. Verse 28. Let a person examine himself then so to eat of the bread and drink of the cup. Mga isoon, so siha ang imong kasing-kasing ning kabuntagon. Anything, mga butang which is unpleasant, na nahimu ni mo at ubangan sa ginoo, pangayog pa sa ilo. Let's pause for a while and pray. Let's eat the bread and drink the cup. Hallelujah. Give a clap offering to the Lord. Father, thank you, God. Salamat sa imong kaayo. Salamat sa imong gugma. Nga imong gipadala ang imong bugtong anak. Bisan pa man sa among mga sala. Imong gikaluyan Ginoo. By your grace and mercy, you send your Son, Jesus Christ, to be crucified, and by His blood, we are healed. Father, we give you thanks, and we give you praise, and we give you glory. In Jesus' precious name we pray, our Lord and Savior. And the grace of the Lord be with you all, and may God richly bless you. Happy Lord's Day. Amen. Indeed, church, God does not deal with a double standard Christian. It is our personal relationship what matters. And service, no, it does not start here. It starts when we go out of this place. Now, as we live our lives, do we declare God as our Lord, Jesus as our Savior? Do we declare, is He God in our lives? Let's sing this last song. Praise the Lord.